Hello. Okay, I'm back with another video. Um, yeah, so if you're ever curious about how to deal with uh, limits involving absolute values, these three examples should serve all your needs. And as always, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for everything, my love. And um, keep crushing the enemy. Keep punching him in the face. And keep saving everybody who um, <laughs> should be saved and deserves to be saved. And that's everybody. But, you know, obviously free will. Like, you got to follow the Lord. Okay. Uh, I mean, you're, like, this small. Like I am. So, like, um, yeah. Like, don't play yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, central to doing all three of these is this beautiful definition of the absolute value. There are a couple of really neat definitions of the absolute value that you don't hear about in algebra. And it's like, wait, why don't they tell them this? They shouldn't keep us, this a secret. Sorry. <laughs> but I have, in previous videos where it was necessary, discussed this definition of the absolute value, which is that the absolute value of x can be defined as a piecewise function. It's equal to x when x is greater or equal to 0. And then um, it's equal to negative x when x is less than 0. Um, as I've said in those videos where this came up, the inclusion of zero can happen in either piece. It can happen in the top piece or it can happen in the bottom piece, yeah? So we can say less or equal to here and get rid of that equal to part on the top. But this is a very sound definition because ahead of time, we don't know if x is positive or negative. So if it's like positive, say absolute value of seven, what this definition says is like, look here, look in here and see which part seven belongs in. Well, seven is greater or equal to zero. So if you're positive, then it's saying like, okay, leave you alone. It's just you. So we've got seven here um, because X is greater or equal to zero, right? Well, X being seven here. So I should say, because seven is greater or equal to zero. Fine. But what about if we had had negative seven inside the absolute value? Because again, this X stands for any number. So it could be a negative number. Well, if X is negative, i.e. negative seven, then it would belong in this bot bottom piece because negative seven is less than zero. So this absolute value definition tells us take the negative of x, but x is negative seven, so negative negative seven is gonna be positive seven. Yeah? Ah, ah, this is cool. So this absolute value definition does work. All right, so what this means is that like, we can now take care of the first two limits really quickly. Specifically, the first limit, this, is going to be lim is x goes to uh, negative two, and then uh, 2, well, um, minus, okay, uh, and then, well, we should first define uh, this function as a piecewise function. Sorry, I was eager to get it done, but we should first define this function as a piecewise function. So this function here, 2 minus absolute value of x over 2 plus x, notice it's going to equal, well, since it involves simply absolute value of x, this absolute value is going to break over zero, right? So it's going to equal 2 minus, well, if x is greater or equal to zero, absolute value of x by what we said here is just x. So it's 2 minus x in the numerator. And of course, we got to retain this denominator, which doesn't have um, an absolute value. So that's 2 plus x. So this function is the same as this when x is greater or equal to zero. But when x is uh, less than zero, then it's going to turn into 2 minus a minus x, right? Absolute value of x, remember, when x is less than zero, it's negative x. So we get 2 minus a minus x in the numerator over 2 plus x in the denominator. Notice 2 minus minus x is 2 plus x here. Oh, wait, 2 plus x here. 2 plus x over 2 plus x is 1. So see there. Now, um, as x goes to negative 2, it would be in this piece, right? So the limit is x goes to negative 2 of this. Since this negative 2 is in this part, we see is going to equal 1. Yeah? Okay, cool. So next up is uh, the second one. Again, we similarly deal with it, which is... Oh, I was going to use blue, wasn't I? Let me use blue. Uh, so we similarly, similar, similarly deal with it using this definition of the absolute value. So we go like this. So let's first define 3x and then minus, or it's plus, sorry, plus absolute value of x over x as a piecewise function. Again, because 
This is simply the absolute value of x. This is the piecewise function that would apply. And so when x is greater or equal to 0, right, the numerator is going to be 3x plus the absolute value of x when x is greater or equal to 0 is simply x. So over x, uh, sorry, 3x plus x, we've replaced this with x, and then over x. Okay, that's 4x over x. Ah, that's just 4. Okay, that reduced very nicely. And when x is less than 0, we're going to get uh, 3x, right, 3x, and then absolute value of x when x is less than 0 is negative x. So we're going to get 3x minus x, all divided by x, right? That says 2x over x. 2x over x is 2. Got it. Ah, 42, my favorite number. <laughs> okay, okay. But that aside, we're saying uh, the limit is x goes to 0. Well, the limit from the right is going to be 4. The limit from the left is going to be 2. So this does not exist. This limit does not exist. Yeah? Cool. Okay, so on to the last one. Uh, saved the best for last, I suppose. Now, we got to focus on the absolute value of uh, 4 minus x part, right? Well, okay, so that's a little bit different. The absolute value of uh, 4 minus x. First, let's do the absolute value of x minus 4, even though I know this says absolute value of 4 minus x, because, well, for some students, it's going to be helpful that I do this first. Okay, so when it's not simply the absolute value of x, what you do is you take the inside and set it equal to zero. So if I set x minus four equal to zero, I'm gonna get x is equal to four. What that means is that now we have to break the piece uh, with four involved as opposed to zero, right? When it's just absolute value of x, it breaks over zero, but now it's gonna break over four. And so in general, you just take the uh, inside of the absolute value and set it equal to zero if you wanna redefine the absolute value as a piecewise function. Uh, wherever the inside is equal to zero is where the piece is going to break. So we see that uh, now we have to have gr uh, x greater or equal to 4 and x is less than 4. Got it. So when x is greater or equal to 4, what happens? Well, let's try a number greater or equal to 4. So 5. 5 minus 4 is going to be positive. I see. So the absolute value of x minus 4, because all these guys are going to be just uh, positive outputs by using what happened when it's positive here, is just simply x minus 4. Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, and obviously, if we try like a number like 2, 2 minus 4 is negative. So then we have to take the negative of this. So it means that in this part, we'll have negative um, x minus 4. All right? Okay, cool. Uh, which is obviously uh, negative x plus 4, which is really 4 minus x. But, 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 we'll leave it like that for now. Because, because, we're going to come here and do uh, this a similar thing with redefining this uh, 4 minus x absolute value. So absolute value of 4 minus x, right, is going to equal, uh, well, again, we take the inside and set it equal to 0. Ah, we see that we still get x equals 4. So the piece, just like that one, breaks over 4. So x is greater or equal to 4, and then x is less than 4, right? Okay, but, 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 when x is greater or equal to 4, what we're going to get, like say 5, I'm going to get 4 minus 5 is negative. So this time, this piece is the one that has to be uh, the negative of the inside, right? Like, so the negative of the inside was the bottom piece here. It was the bottom piece there. Um, but like, clearly, if I plug in a number that belongs in here, the inside is going to be negative. So I have to take the negative of it. So negative 4 minus x is what I'm going to write over here. And in this piece, well, it's just simply 4 minus x, right? So I write 4 minus x. Got it. Got it. Cool. So uh, with this handy, we could deal with this now. Yeah? Okay. In fact, with Jesus handy, we can deal with anything. Anything they want to throw at us. They're going to break themselves trying to break us. Okay. Um, all right. So this here. So uh, lim... Well, I'll put the limit, but first let's define the 4 minus x over absolute value of 4 minus x in here, right? So this is going to equal, again, because this is going to break over 4, this whole thing is going to break over 4. So when x is greater or equal to 4 and when s x is less than 4, right? That's uh, the pieces. Got it. 
So we said when x is greater or equal to 4, this part is going to be negative of 4 minus x, right? So I'm going to write in the denominator negative 4 minus x. So obviously, this numerator is not affected by absolute value, so we leave that alone. So we go 4 minus x over negative, and then it's going to be 4 minus x, right? Got it. And then, um, so that's in the top piece. And here in this piece, well, we said the absolute value of 4 minus x is just 4 minus x. We're going to have 4 minus x over 4 minus x. Ah, okay, so the numerator, which is 4 minus x over negative 4 minus x, is just going to be negative 1, right? Okay, so the numerator is negative 1. Got it. Oh, I accidentally erased the bracket, a part of it anyway. Okay, we'll live, we'll live, we'll live, we'll live. And this is 1. All right, so kind of like what happened here, um, this is supposed to say limit as x goes to 4. When we go to 4, well, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are not going to be uh, the same because one of them says negative 1, the other says 1, and therefore this is does not exist, right? Okay, cool, a little anticlimactic. If it was 0, as x goes to 0, obviously uh, this piece contains x goes to 0, so it would not be does not exist. If it was x goes to 0, it would be negative 1, right? Okay, cool. Uh, 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 we want a positive one. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Keep watching. Take care.